Hello there, YouTube. I am Necrostevo, and we are here today with our Week 1 matchup in the Pokemon Premier League Season 2. Our Week 1 opponent is Vepsis, one of the well-known Draft League players who has been around for quite a while. You can see the matchup on the screen, but I will go in-depth into the Team Builder. If you'd like to see his side of the battle, I have a link to his channel in the description. And I also have a link to jump straight to the battle if you don't want to hear in depth about the sets that I brought. Let's review the Horde who will be helping us this week against Vepsis. Now it has to be said, the name Vepsis itself, that sounds like a demon, right? So we're gonna have to bring some power here. You can see in the matchup that he has access to Iron Valiant, Iron Treads, Deoxys Defense, Gengar, Noivern, Haxorus, Rotom Wash, Alolan Muck, Regice, and Breloom. And his Terra Captains are Noivern and Regice, with Noivern having access to Flying, Normal, and Fairy, and Regice having access to Ice, Water, and Steel. So up first, I decided to bring in Crocodile. He will be my dedicated lead for this battle. With good matchups against the Treads, to a, a lesser extent the Deoxys Defense, Gengar barring something like Focus Blast, Haxorus uh, with Intimidate, Noivern, I'm even going to be bringing Smackdown for Rotom, and I can hit Muck with Earthquake as well. Breloom or Regice would constitute switch outs on my part. I gave Crocodile the leftovers item with the Intimidate ability, and I went Jolly with just enough speed from max speed to Rotom, with the rest into HP and Special Defense. With investment into HP and Special Defense, that means that I am two hit KO'd by Hydro Pump from Rotom, even if the rocks are up, I am two hit KO'd by Terra Normal Choice Specs Modest Noivern Boom Burst. I'm two hit KO'd by a Modest Regice Ice Beam, even if it's not terra into Ice Type. And those are all really important because I think he would hit those moves expecting to move into a KO type percentage against me in there. So that's gonna be our dedicated lead this week. I have Knock Off, Earthquake, Smackdown, and Taunt. If I see Deoxys in the lead, Iron Treads, or even to a lesser extent, the Alolan Muck with possible annoying things like Toxic and stuff, I'm gonna hit the Taunt button. Anything else is getting immediately knocked off or Earthquaked. Up next, I decided to go with a Walking Wake Destruction set in the Substitute Agility variety. Walking Wake in the Sun with this week can basically throw off Hydro Steams early on, and then in the mid or late game, after I've kind of figured out who he has scarfed or who he hasn't, I can set up a Substitute or an Agility and sweep through. Now with this Walking Wake, I only invested, or rather I put max investment into Special Attack, but then for speed, I needed to ensure that even if he brought something like a Scarf Noivern, or if he brought Garf Haxorus, or if it got to plus one via scale shot, that if I got an agility up, I'd still outspeed. There are some issues there with, like if he went scale shot into my substitute, but with Walking Waste and Nice General Defense, he would need to have loaded dice in order to make sure that he broke my substitute. With the investment that I decided to go with, Rotom Wash, is a guaranteed three hit KO in the sun, even if it's like a maximum specially defensive Rotom Wash, which I could see coming here. Rotom Wash generally is just only annoyed by something like Venusaur. Otherwise I could see it kind of coming for this matchup to be annoying. After that, we have Orthworm. Orthworm, I decided to go with uh, Impish, max HP, 212 defense, and then 40 attack EVs. I gave it the red card because of the likelihood that something might hit it and hit it expecting to kill it and then not kill it, hopefully. Uh, the idea there being is something like the, the Booster Valiant, is, Booster Energy Valiant has Booster Energy and it's physical, it's gonna get out of there. Same thing with the Haxorus trying to set up or to a lesser extent, the Iron Treads as well, maybe trying to spin. I'm just kind of knocking him out into something less viable for him to be in. Now with 40 attack EVs, I have the moves Body Press, Iron Defense, Heavy Slam, and Stealth Rock. If I use Heavy Slam on Iron Valiant with my attack EVs, it gets one shot. I, I know I'm going to have opportunity to set up the rocks here, so I just need the rocks up and those 40 EVs, and I will be able to take out that Iron Valiant unless he for some reason puts HP on his Iron Valiant. After that, we have our Juicy Galarian Slowking rocking Black Sludge with Regenerator, and I went Sassy Nature, which means we drop our speed even more, but I went with Sassy because I am going to be using Earthquake on my Galarian Slowking. We need Earthquake in order to tag Muck. I just need to put 
Alolan Muck in range of my sweepers in Walking Wake and Venusaur this week. And so if I can just hit him once with any of those moves there, whether it's Earthquake from my Galarian uh, Slowking or Earthquake from my Crocodile, or uh, hit him with the Hydro Stream early on and then swap out, then that means he'll have a much more difficult time weathering some hits there. Now on my Galarian Slow King, I went with max HP, 200 special defense, 52 defense. Those hit some important benchmarks such as always taking a choice specs Iron Valiant Shadow Ball, always taking a max special attack Gengar Hex after I've been status, always a two hit KO, even after things like the burn damage and switching into Stealth Rocks. Uh, it also ensures that choice specs, max special attack, Terra Normal, Noivern Boom Burst does not KO me even if he's packing all that power. And that means I get the chance to retaliate with Future Slight or Sludge Bomb or Earthquake, depending on who's in against me. I did consider slashing Thunder Wave on that slot, but I I really just need to put things into damage. I don't feel like I have a lot of issues outspeeding this week with my sun up, but I do have issues dealing damage. So those are the main goals there. Finally, the last teammate for this week is Venusaur. Venusaur, I went with the classic max speed, max special attack, uh, life Orb with Giga Drain, Sludge Bomb, and Earth Power with Growth. I'll be able to speed tie a Choice Scarf Noivern in the sun if I go max investment on my speed. And I can use uh, Growth to grab boost against things like Rotom or Deoxys Defense, Gengar, and possibly Iron Treads because I foresee him bringing a little bit more of a bulky Iron Treads in this match and not really an offensive one. And so that means Venusaur will be able to live any hit. I briefly toyed with the idea of putting Lumberry on Venusaur because it is likely that I will get status between things like switching into Gengar, the Rotom being there, and then it's not uncommon for Deoxys Defense to carry things like Thunder Wave as well. So I did think about it, but I went with Life Orb just for the power and uh, that's going to be the squad for the week. So just a brief review in case you are popping in here right Right at the end, we're leading with Crocodile, almost no matter what the matchup is, because Crocodile can take any special hits with the special investment and then intimidate any physical attackers. We have a substitute agility, walking weight, a red card Orthworm with just enough offensive investment to one shot something like the Noivern coming in with Heavy Slam. Galarian Slow King with Earthquake for the Muck, alongside a lot of special defense to ensure that we're not one shot by any special moves in this matchup. And then an offensive growth life orb Venusaur with Giga Drain, Sludge Bomb, and Earth Power, with the idea being to either nab a growth boost or to use use walking wakes attacks early to kind of weaken things and then come back in later and use agility and sweep so that's the game plan now let's see how well we execute all righty and we are here with the battle you can see that we are sticking with the game plan for going up against the helsinki high dragons also as denoted vepsis has gengar iron valiant Noivern, which is a terra captain rocking possibly flying normal or fairy type iron treads haxorus and Deoxys Defense. Now, when I first saw this squad, I was like, okay, first things first, we have to summon Mephisto to the battlefield. That is our Crocodile. He needs to stay as the lead. And in that lead slot, if he leads with the Deoxys, then I can immediately taunt it. Anything else I'm thinking knock off immediately. We do see High Dragon, um, not in this battle. I don't know why I said Hydragon. Was I thinking of like the three demonic heads? When you see Haxorus, uh, Haxorus is black. That might be why I said that. But Haxorus leads, our Intimidate goes off. And so that means we need to immediately knock off here. Uh, we could knock off, we could Earthquake. Uh, either of those options will work there. There's no point in taunting here just because I knew he was gonna be faster when we saw the ability prompts go up. When I knocked off the loaded dice, I did expect a scale shot to be coming in my direction. Uh, Haxorus also gets access to Brick Break um, and Close Combat for fighting moves, but I thought after the Intimidate, I could still live it with my investment. First scale shot of the season and Vepsis does miss it, which is huge because that means that I get to knock out his Haxorus without my Crocodile taking any damage to start this battle. And so that means that is the first blood that we're able to draw for the season. Um, while scale shot does not have perfect accuracy, it is much more likely than anything to hit. So not a great start, but he's able to pivot immediately into this iron treads, which gets the booster defense from its booster energy. Now I could have gone for earthquake here, but I wanted to save my crocodile for, um, the Gengar and also for the Deoxys defense and thinking either he's going to set up stealth rocks or he's going to 
Earthquake. I switched out to Orthworm immediately. And I also could have seen a knockoff there. I don't mind losing the red card. But since I saw a knockoff, I decided to wait to Terra my Orthworm. Now I set up my Stealth Rocks as well, which means we both have some crafty traps floating around this field. Um, I was very tempted to Terra right here, but I thought that he might try to rapid spin or he could also go for body press. I could also, um, I also didn't Terra there thinking that he might swap out. I, I just didn't want my Pokemon getting their item swap, uh, knocked off if I swapped out. And so I didn't Terra and I set up a, an iron defense thinking that might scare him out. And then I went for the heavy slam on the switch, thinking that I could scare him out. Now he goes out into Gengar and that takes a ton of damage from that heavy slam. Um, I really wish he had gone into the Valiant there. I took a long time to think about my next move here and thinking that he would go for Shadow Ball, I decided to swap out and I went back into Crocodile. Um, now the reason why I went into Crocodile here is because I wanted a good pivot because to, hit, to effectively hit Crocodile, he would need to have either Energy Ball or Focus Blast. Energy Ball had no way to KO me, but you see here he got a special defense drop. I did not notice that during this battle. Right when that special defense drop happened, I was actually trying to mess with my capture card. So lesson learned, I will let Billiam handle the capture card in the future and I will focus on the battle because he goes for energy ball and me thinking that I could live it, I stayed in and I knocked off. Now, even though I knew um, that I could live an energy ball and I shouldn't have stayed, I should not have stayed in there in the first place. The better move there would have been to either hard swap out into something like Venusaur or I could have also hard swapped back um, to honestly anything because I needed to save Crocodile and I needed his HP for the Deoxys defense. Now here, I go into Torkoal thinking that I can easily take any move here and Sludge Bomb just does way more than I was expecting. He also gets the poison, which means that I can't even come back in on the rocks. Uh, I do pick up the KO on his Gengar because I wanted to get it out of the way, thinking that, okay, even if he goes into something after this, I have a heat rock on my Torkoal. So that means I can just sit in here and I have plenty of sun tones to work with. Now he surprises me when he goes for Psychic Noise. Psychic Noise is a new move in the DLC, and this move makes it so that Pokemon cannot heal for two turns, but it's also a sound move. For those of you who don't know, whenever you're chanting a summoning spell, even if you put in like a doppelganger or if you have a stand-in and they cover their ears, the substitute does not block the sound move. The damage is still done. Like you cannot block any sort of spell that's being chanted orally by covering your ears. It's still, you still are gonna have the damage from that. So foolish me, I went in to my walking wake here and set up a substitute. And at first I was like, oh man, we're doing great. He, he went for mirror coat as I am trying to set up here. But that's because we both forgot that sound moves go through the substitute. Now the other thing here, even with the sun up, this Hydro Steam does no damage to this Deoxys. This is why I wanted to draft this thing. This is absolutely Assault Vested. And now that I let my Crocodile go down, I have no way of really meaningfully damaging this thing. Uh, the other downside is, is that he realizes that um, he can just break my sub, but then he can start going for Psychic Noise. And so you can see that he swaps over to Psychic Noise here, and that is just a terrible sound because he realized that he could just damage me through the substitute. And I wasted a turn subbing, and I could have gotten off another Hydro Steam into his face, and three Hydro Steams might have done it, and then I would have had Venusaur left for his entire team. But since I was not able to get that extra Hydro Steam off because I forgot that the noise moves go through substitutes. That sucked. So now I'm going to go into Venusaur thinking, okay, well he's low enough even with an Assault Vest, I'm pretty sure I can KO him from this range. I was very tempted to set up a growth, but this was the last turn of Sun, and then I knew I'd be forced out anyway, but then I failed to KO him with the Sludge Bomb and I don't get the poison. So 
That made me so sad there to see that he lived that. I thought for sure a life orb sludge bomb would do it, but that is just the power of Deoxys's defense, especially with the assault vest. So I do take another hit of the life orb in exchange for taking it out. And now that the Deoxys defense is down, he decides to go out into his Noivern. And the way that he brought it out, I figured that he was just going to immediately Terra Normal and go for Boom Burst. I've been saving Galarian Slowking this whole battle, and that is one thing that I did do properly here. I preserved Galarian Slowking for his special attackers. Now, earlier with the Gengar, it probably would have even been better to go into Galarian Slowking from uh, Crocodile than it was to just leave Crocodile in there. Because I knew if he was using Shadow Ball, he could not to hit Kaomi. He would need Hex, and Hex would have to be into a status Galarian Slowking for him to have a chance at two hit KOing me after the Stealth Rocks. And we see, especially, again, this is not even a max invested Slow King. We see how little that Boom Burst does, but that's because he's not Choice Specs. He was actually Choice Scarfed. Um, of course, speed does not matter here because my Galarian Slow King is so slow. So, so very slow. But that's okay. I just, again, I wanted some damage here. I was worried about the Iron Tread swapping in, but I was thinking he might just try to stay in and, and beat me down. So I went for Future Sight to hopefully put him in a position where he'd be swapping out. And then here I was like, all right, he has to go for the Earthquake. So I'm going to go back out into my Earthworm. And even if he doesn't, if he goes for knockoff, Earthworm has already lost his item. So it won't do that much damage. Um, now, I admit that here I played too many mind games with myself. The proper play would have been to go out into Orthworm, tear a ghost, and then go for body press. But me thinking that he would swap out again, I stayed in and I did it in Terra and I went for heavy slam. And as we can see there, he just went for the body press again because he didn't have anything to lose from that. And so I didn't even get a chance to knock him out in like from a differential standpoint. Body press here too would have done more damage than when uh, he was in earlier because earlier he had the booster defense to his energy. So here my defense was higher than his um, than before when I had to use iron defense. So he does end up taking me out there, which is unfortunate. My Galarian Slowking is still at full HP, but I'm worried about the Earthquake. And so I figure because he's a more defensive Iron Treads, I might be able to outspeed him. But Vepsis is also a solid battler, so I would assume that he would outspeed a max speed Venusaur. But if he didn't, this Earth Power would have KO'd him. So here we do see that he outspeeds me with the Earthquake, and I'm at such weakened state of HP because the sun's not up, the skies aren't clear, and I lost all of that HP to the Deoxys defense earlier. That was really the turning point in this battle was Deoxys defense. Not only did I forget about how noise moves work with Substitute, but I also had a secondary opportunity to make up for it if I had just kept on going for Hydro Steam and had not set up another Substitute. Uh, then I think I would have at least been in a position to have a very healthy Venusaur in the end game. And then I would have had, um, if I had KO'd the Deoxys defense, I would have had a healthy Venusaur and a healthy Slow King. And those two would have come down to Iron Valiant, who possibly could have still beat down Venusaur, but Iron Valiant would have struggled to one-shot Slow King, whereas Sludge Bomb from Slow King can easily one-shot Iron Valiant. So unfortunately, the... Victorian Shadows do lose this first battle and I have identified the ingredients that have led to this loss and so next week we will make improvements. Now thank you all so much for hanging in with me during this battle. I really appreciate Vepsis battling me. Not only did I have to do the draft with COVID but I had to do this battle with COVID and he was very gracious for scheduling and everything. So um, if you have not, remember to go check out his channel. And I put his link in the description. And thank you so much.